one in love and light. Thank you so much to the ABQ CSL players and Jesse Swarton Truber on vocals this morning with Jeff and Clarissa backing her up. Thank you all so much for such a beautiful, beautiful service we are creating here together. And I have to tell you, we've been having a good time doing it. And as uh, I was showering this morning and in contemplation, because you know, showers and contemplation, they go perfectly together. I kept hearing Kendrick Lamar just rolling in my head. And I was like, wow, Kendrick is here visiting this morning. And what kept rolling in my mind is, sit down, be humble. Sit down, be humble. Sit down, be humble. Reverend R uh, Rami, Rabbi Rami Shapiro, said in the book, The Sacred Art of Loving Kindness that we've been studying, not knowing rather than knowing is the key to loving kindness. Not knowing leads to genuine humility and humility is the prerequisite for loving kindness. And I've been hearing a lot, and I've been hearing my whole life really, from the black community about how frustrating it is as we walk through this world that we just need to scream sometimes. We need to riot sometimes. This idea of sit down, be humble, listen to us. And then I started to think about that, that, that yell, that cry, that scream, that sometimes gentle whisper, shh. Consider that you don't know what you think you know. And then I, I realized spirit is like, sit down, be humble, stop for a minute. Walk into that space that Clarissa was telling us about in the reading of just considering for a moment to empty yourself, to linger in this wildly uncomfortable space of not knowing. To pause long enough to empty ourselves of what we think we know, of the stories we tell, and open ourselves to the present moment that exists without a blueprint, that exists without all of our beliefs and the stories we've been telling our entire existence. And be humble. Be humbled by the infiniteness of the presence of spirit itself. The epicness of all that we don't know. Because we actually can't practice loving kindness, as Rami Shapiro says, from this place of thinking that we know, from this place of having it already figured out, right? The mission here at Albuquerque Center for Spiritual Living is love and action, transforming lives and communities. And I love this mission. And our vision is a world that works for everyone. But I have no idea what that looks like. I have no idea what a world that works for everybody looks like. I don't know what infinite love looks like. This is an idea that is actually beyond my little mind and brain to truly comprehend. Rabbi Shapiro goes on in his book to talk about rather than affirm the truth of infinite love, and the freedom it bestows. And think about that. Think about the freedom that the infinite love offers us. I think it terrifies us. He talks about in the book that, that uh, quote from the movie, you can't handle the truth. And I believe he's right. We can't handle the truth of infinite love. We just, it blows our minds. 
It freaks us out. I think oneness and unity and the truth of the fabric that we are all interwoven in is mind-blowingly panic-worthy. And it is a truth that is, it is beyond our ability to truly wrap ourselves around. And so Rabbi Rami says, rather than affirm the truth of infinite love and the freedom it bestows, we have to see past the falsehood of the stories we already tell ourselves and allow them to drop away. You know what that means to me is dismantling, dismantling white supremacy, dismantling systems and structures that support poverty. Dismantling is actually a spiritual practice. Because really, the only way that we begin to move into the presence of this infinite love is like Rumi says, is removing the barriers to it. Our approach must be then identifying what it isn't, identifying what is false, because we don't actually know what is true. And not knowing, as the rabbi says, is the beginning of wisdom. And I want to come back to this idea of what it takes to be humble enough to not know because it is in that empty, quiet, still place that we can begin to move towards knowing, that we can begin to access that divine wisdom that is in the heart and center of each of us. It is in this place of not knowing and letting our stories of what we thought we knew our beliefs of what we thought was so fall away so that we can then begin to entertain what truth is trying to fill that space of the emptiness. You know, I was thinking about this idea of emptiness, which is a big idea that gets batted around in spiritual communities. And, you know, that we must empty ourselves so that we can then feel and be with God and feel and commune with spirit. And yes, I agree. And then I was thinking about that in the context of science of mind, founded by Ernest Holmes. And the concept of the practice that we come together in science of mind communities to really learn, this affirmative prayer practice. And the purpose of that practice is really to empty ourselves of beliefs and thoughts that don't serve. The purpose of that practice is to empty our hearts and minds of belief and thought and idea that we are coming to understand in our own lives is not true. And so we use affirmative prayer, we use spiritual mind treatment as a tool to step into the not knowing, to remove from our own minds the ideas and the thoughts and the stories that are in the way of what we believe to be true. And again, I don't know. I think spirit is all there is. I think there is this only one living, breathing love that has brought me into existence in each one of us. I work with that. But really, I don't know what that means. I don't actually know what that looks like. And so I gather my tools, I gather myself in prayer so that I can empty myself of what I think I know about that and open myself to this present moment where the only place I can actually meet truth. And when I do that in my own spiritual practice, it then begins to make it possible for me to do it with you. It begins to make it possible for me to empty myself of what I think I know about you and what I think I know about our relationship. 
and get to a place where I am now actually present and available to who and what you are as a divine expression of spirit itself. That's why this emptying and this humility is so critical to loving kindness. In order for us to be together like the opening song and make it better together, I have to be able to be present with you. You have to be able to be present with me. And I get to walk into that presence with some curiosity, right? Because I don't know, if I'm willing to walk into every interaction with you with curiosity and wonder and putting aside what I think I know, what I think you're going to say, what I think you're going to do, or what I think you think. If I can put all that down and simply be present with you and allow you to share with me whatever it is you've got, and when you give me the same courtesy, this is how a world we all want to be living in comes into being. This is how we learn how to come together and disagree and have widely opposing views. And one of the things that I know for sure is that we don't get to move forward in this time. We don't get to follow the way that the light is showing us forward if we don't get really good at disagreement, if we don't get really good at being curious about each other's perspectives if we don't actually get intentional about putting ourselves in circles and putting ourselves in conversations and interactions with people we disagree with, with people we find really different, with people who maybe we don't understand their perspective. I had a conversation this week with one of my dear, dear besties, and She's really good at that. And she was talking about how she has cultivated a circle of intimate friendships with really, really different people, with different pers perspectives, with different heritage, with different cultural backgrounds, with different economic class. And she's done that intentionally. And I, I found myself saying to her, wow, do you get how radical that is? And how unusual that is? And yet how critical it is that we intentionally do that with one another. Because if we believe that each of us, every single living creature on this planet is a face of God, how do we expect to know God if we aren't actually surrounding ourselves with varied faces of God? And it really got me thinking about this silly thing we do in spiritual communities especially. So we want to be around like-minded folks. That's dumb. It's just dumb. I don't want to be around a bunch of like-minded people who are going to just tell me everything that I already think and know. I don't get to grow if all I do is surround myself with like-minded folks. No. How do I get to get closer to God and this infinite love if I don't actually put myself next to all that God is, all that love is? If I'm not willing to stretch myself beyond my own edges, my own beliefs, my own ideas, The Zulu people have a word called indaba. And in this tradition, it means I have something important to tell you. And when they practice indaba, it's actually a coming together of circle of folks. And they, they sit in a circle so that there can be a perspective from each different person in the circle. And everybody in that circle has an opportunity to share their unique individual perspective. And everybody in that circle, because someone said in Daba, I have something to tell you. I have something important to tell you. They move into that moment empty. 
empty so that they can hear and take in this important communication. And I love that idea. I love that idea that we can be with each other in a way that we empty ourselves and so deeply listen to whatever is being communicated that we allow ourselves to be transformed by that. That's what deep listening really is about. Deep listening, yes, is a loving thing we can do for one another. And Quaker teacher Douglas Steer, who's an author as well, said, holy listening is to listen another soul into life. And I love that idea because it is an incredible gift we give to one another. But we love their soul into life and we listen their soul into life into a condition of disclosure and discovery. He goes on to say, it may be the greatest service that any human being ever performs for another. And I want to step that back because I don't believe we can deeply listen until we empty. Until we get humble in the not knowing. And allow ourselves to be present and curious. And that's when the magic of deep listening gets to happen. And when we do that for one another, it is true loving kindness to welcome a differing viewpoint, to welcome and embrace disagreement. It is one of my favorite things when one of you come to me and be like, Amani, that was BS. I don't like that thing you did. I love that. I love it when that happens. I love it when we can sit down and, I, and rest assured in love that we can work it out. You can cuss me out. You can yell at me. You can say all the things. And because I truly, truly am curious about you and your experience, and because I believe in the power of capital L love, I really believe that idea that all things are possible with God. Which means this disagreement is for me. Your pissed offedness is for me. And it's for us. Because we are going to get to a place that is more vulnerable and more intimate and more true as a result. And it's not easy, it's surely not comfortable, but comfort is not promised, nor is it the goal. Growing, growing my edges. I'm gonna share a story that also went down this week. So my sweetheart sent out an email that I was very worried about. I thought it was a little harsh and I didn't like the tone and I got triggered. I was not so much in that open, curious, spacious place. And without pausing and remembering my tools and going into that place of spaciousness, I immediately called him and was like, no, you can't do that. And then had to reel myself back in within a few hours and make apology. Like, oh, I forgot to pause. I forgot to take that breath that allows me to access that curious place of wonder. And I tone policed you. And I squashed your experience because I got really uncomfortable. And I allowed myself to act in fear. And you know the beautiful thing about that? is love is big enough that I was able to recognize my misstep and clean it up. And I knew that our love was great enough to hold the space for us to work that out. That's how powerful love is. That's how powerful taking a pause breath is. And how simple it is to access that place of curiosity, 
to access that place of humility and be like, wow, I don't know. That's not mine to say the best way to communicate this is. That's not mine to tell you how you should feel and how you should communicate your feelings. What is mine is to pause and to offer my presence is to pause and get curious. I wonder if I sit with this long enough, I wonder if I sit across from you long enough, what will come of this discomfort? I wonder if I can bring my full attention to your rage, if something amazing might come of it. Imagine, curiously, what would happen if you, in your life right now, looked for ways to take that pause and get curious? Think of ways right now, and put it in the comment feed, of places and relationships in your life where you could pause, where you could just take a step back and let it be for a minute. Where might that serve you? Where in your life might you be able to better practice holy listening? How might that serve you? And I guarantee it, that simple practice of pausing, of breathing consciously, allows us to step right into, oh, I wonder, Hmm, what could come from this? What good is in this for me right now? How could I move into this next conversation or interaction more present? How could I learn from this super different way of thinking? How could I learn from someone's wildly different viewpoint than mine. What a gift we give each other when we invite disagreement. What a gift we give each other when we just say, yes, I am going to be present right here and right now with, without opinion, without judgment, without preconceived notions, and then give myself to you in that moment. It is a gift you give me, and it is a gift I give you. And I believe it is foundational to loving kindness and to building a world together that truly works for everyone. And so if you are willing to say yes to that, to say yes to the pause, to say yes to disagreement, to say yes to curiosity and wonder, I invite you to anchor this with me in prayer right now. Because what I do know for sure is there is this greater love, there is this collective love, there is this epic, giant, infinite love that is present here right now as me, as you, as this entire globe and beyond that is in my understanding and beyond my understanding. And I allow that love to move and have its being through me right here and right now. And I know that as we each say yes, that love just moves greater and greater. It shows us the way forward. It reveals to each of us in our beautiful, unique ways the world that works for everyone. It reveals those perfect next right steps. It reveals the places of pause and lingering and curiosity and wonder and joy. And I know that that is exactly what is unfolding right here and right now. I know that is exactly what is blossoming into being this beautiful, epic love. I know that it is good. 
And I know that every single step of the way is for me, for you, for us. And I just let it be. I let it be the goodness that it is. Thank you, life. Thank you, God. And so it is. Thank you.